The armament of the Artillery Speciale. Tankists were given a selection of various weapons that they needed to be familiar with both inside and out during their time in the AS. One imagines the famous French 75 of the saint chamond the smaller 75 fort gun of the Schneider, or the Hotchkiss Model 1914 and Puteaux 37SA Model 1918 of the Renault FT. But every tankist also carries with them a pistol and a holster on their field belt. Tankist personal defense weapons inside and outside the tank during the Great War was either a ruby automatic pistol or a revolver Model 1892 placed in a holster, usually on the right front of their uniform, on the field belt model 1903 mod 1914. Colts and 1911 pistols would also be seen within the AS, sporadically issued to some tank crews post-war. The ruby automatic pistol was generally preferred among the tankists due to its larger ammunition capacity and faster reload time compared to the revolver, though the revolver was favored by some officers. The ruby would see widespread use within the artillery spéciale more so than the ordnance revolver model 1892. The vast majority of tankists would take the ruby into action and rely on it when it became necessary to exit their tank in combat. The ruby leather holster snugly fit the weapon and had a single belt loop to be fitted on the right front of the field belt. The focus here, however, is on the Ordnance Revolver Model 1892, as out of the two, it is the firearm I prefer and own. By the time war was declared, the primary French service handgun was the Ordnance Revolver Model 1892. Produced by Manufacteur de Armes de saint Etienne. This double-action, six-shot revolver was originally designed to serve as a commissioned officer's personal sidearm. It replaced the Moss 1873 revolver, and over 350,000 revolver model 1892 would be produced from 1892 to 1924. Due to the small number of them in circulation, they continued to be only available to officers while standard troops of all kinds received the Ruby automatic pistol. Revolver production would be slow as Manufacteur de Armes de saint Etienne would be ordered to focus on producing rifles and machine guns, which were deemed to be more important to the war effort. The revolver was later replaced by more modern semi-automatic pistols in 1935, but it was not uncommon for this revolver model to see service during World War II. The Revolver Model 1892 is a quality-crafted, solid-frame revolver with a case-hardened, right-handed loading gate which, when opened, allows the cylinder to swing out to the right on a hinged frame to extract spent casings and to reload. The spent shell cases can be ejected all at once using the ejection rod in the center of the cylinder. For maintenance purposes, the left-hand plate of the weapon's frame can be swung back on a hinge revealing the internal parts for oiling or cleaning. These parts are individually stamped with numbers that indicate the order in which they must be disassembled. The gun was chambered in 8mm French ordnance, firing at roughly 625 to 730 FPS. It can fire both in single action or double action. Tankist officers carried the revolver model 1892 in a large leather holster with a single belt loop and two support strap mounting points on the back. The holster would be placed on the right front of the field belt and would occasionally be worn with support straps due to the size and weight of the holster with the revolver placed in it. It's a simple stitched leather holster with brass strap loops and brass flap retainer. The holster held an additional 12 rounds of ammunition under the flap in three small pockets, with the cartridges divided evenly in fours. Holster acceptance stamps are located on the inside bottom of the flap cover. The reception commission stamp was sometimes applied to the inside of the flap cover as well. When training on the use of these weapons, the tankists first undergo basic target shooting on an outdoor range. After target shooting exercises on the outdoor range, the tankist then practice on hitting targets inside a stationary tank through the pistol ports. In combat, shooting the pistol through the openings of the tank to disperse any enemy troops close by would be the most common action these weapons performed. 
though of course the pistol would be used by tankists while outside the tank as well, either because the tank was knocked out or they had found themselves outside their tank when they were attacked. Historically, tank crews armed with pistols is nothing surprising, it simply makes sense. A weapon small enough to fit in the tank or on the person that can be carried without restricting the operation of the vehicle is ideal. Pistols fit this role perfectly and are still used today by tank crews to some extent. They would be delegated to more of a sidearm role beginning in the Second World War due to the now widely available submachine guns that were still compact enough to fit in the confines of the tank but could provide a much greater volume of fire.